Hi everyone, so today I have a beautiful question for you in which we're going to discuss a system of equations and a little bit of the inequalities as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a mix of the two. And on the face of it, this might seem a very intimidating problem, might seem very big and ugly. But when you look at the solution, it's actually going to be very simple. The ideas are very simple. It's just really quick solutions, very nice solution. So without wasting any time, let's get started. This is the problem number three from the Indian National Math Olympiad in the year 2010. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can maybe solve a system of equations um, and employ the AMG HM inequality over here. Then obviously we have book systems for INMO and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so we want to find all non-zero numbers x, y, z that satisfy the given system of equations. Now when you look at this, like I said before, it seems very intimidating, right? There are like you would not like kind of get where to start this off, right? Where, how do how do I begin this? Like where to start? You know, there are so many starting points. There are so many things that I can do, but how do I begin with, right? So first of all, when I saw this problem, I could notice that x equals to zero and y is equal to zero and z is equal to zero are obviously a trivial solution, zero comma zero comma zero. But they've said non-zero real numbers, so obviously this cannot be counted as a solution in the solution set, right? So we need to explore it a little bit more. Now then, if you actually notice this, x is per 4 plus y is per 4 plus x square y square. Can I kind of manipulate this in a way to factorize this? And the answer is actually yes. I can write this as x is per 4 plus y is per 4 plus 2x square y square minus x square y square. So really what I'm doing is I'm just adding an x square y square and subtracting an x square y square. And this can be very easily factorized. So this just becomes x square plus y square whole square minus xy whole square and now you can just factorize this as x square plus y square plus xy times x square plus y square minus xy and this is very fascinating because you know you can form similar factorizations for this and for this as well right which is very cool also another thing to notice is that when we have this x square plus y square plus xy we have that in the first equation as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to number these equations. So let's call this number one. Let's call this number two, right? Now, if I just factor out all of these, all of these three quantities, what will I get? So basically X squared plus Y squared plus X Y times X squared plus Y squared minus X Y this times Y squared plus Z squared plus Y Z times Y squared plus Z squared minus Y Z into z squared plus x squared plus xz times z squared plus x squared minus xz all of this is nothing but really the left hand side right left hand side of this equation number two you just factorize all of these terms just like we factorize this we can factor the other quantities as well right and what is this this is equal to right hand side x cube y cube z cube now once i've come to this point i can just label it as equation number three now, do you notice certain similarities between equation number one and equation number three? Thing is that these terms, this, this, and this, the product of these three terms is actually equation number one, right? So basically what I can do is I can divide equation number three by equation number one. And when I do that, I'll get something very cool. X squared plus Y squared minus X Y, Y squared plus Z squared minus Y Z times Z squared plus X squared minus X Z this is going to be nothing but x square y square z square and we can call that equation number four so till now it might look like we're not doing much you know we've just we're just still hovering around a little bit you know with the questions just trying to manipulate it a little bit but actually 99 percent of the question is done over here because if you just notice if i just maybe try to apply emgm for two numbers x square and y square it looks something like this, right? 2x square y square, obviously. So this just becomes x square plus y square by 2 is greater than or equal to xy. 
or otherwise x square plus y square is greater than or equal to 2xy you know this can be very easily seen like this as well x minus y whole square is greater than or equal to 0 a squared quantity is always greater than or equal to 0 and when you just open this you'll simply get x square plus y square minus 2xy greater than or equal to 0 or otherwise x square plus y square greater than or equal to 2xy you know simple stuff so what does that mean that means that x square plus y square minus xy is greater than or equal to xy Similarly, by symmetry, y square plus z square minus yz is greater than or equal to yz. And similarly, z square plus x square minus xz is greater than or equal to xz. Now, if you just notice this equation number 4, what is equation number 4? It's just a product of these three quantities. Right? So basically, basically, x square plus y square minus xy, right? y square plus z square minus yz times z square plus x square minus xz is greater than or equal to xy times yz times xz which is x square y square z square well that's very fascinating because in equation number four we have the same thing we have the same terms we have the exact same terms just that we do not have an inequality we rather have an equality right we have the equality case instead of the inequality case so what is happening over here? What is happening over here? If you just analyze this equation number four, it so happens that the minimum value of the left hand side is the value of the right hand side, right? So if you actually compute the minimum value of this thing, it is x square y square z square, right? But we have an equality. So it's basically the case of minima, right? If I can put it that way, it is the case of minima. And when is this minima occurring? When is the equality occurring? Equality is when over here, Instead of an inequality, we have an equality and we have an equality everywhere. Right? What does that mean? So basically what is happening is x square plus y square minus x y is equal to x y. In other words, x square plus y square minus 2 x y is equal to 0. So x minus y whole square is equal to 0, which implies x equals to y. Similarly, because from here you got x equals to y, from here you will get y is equal to z, and from here you will get x equals to z. Therefore, we have x equals to y is equal to z. So to kind of go back on that a little bit, what we essentially observed, what we essentially observed by this inequality is that the minimum value of this entire thing can be x square, y square, z square. And from equation number four, we know that we need to choose x, y, and z such that they satisfy that minimum value of that particular polynomial, right? And that minimum value is happening when all three are equal to one another. You know, this can also be seen by AMGM. So what did I do? I just basically applied AMGM on x square and y square, right? So when will they be equal to one another? They'll be equal when both of these quantities are equal. And because we're talking about uh, non-negatives, we have x equals to y essentially. And so all three quantities need to be equal to one another. Okay, that's fascinating. Now then, how do we proceed? So we've kind of got this result that x equals to y is equal to z. Now all I really need to do is I need to plug this into any one of the two equations, the original equation. You can either plug it into number one or plug it into number two and maybe figure out a value. So if I just plug this out into equation number one, I'll get 3x squared, th uh, 3 x squared, yeah, times 3 x squared times 3 x squared will be equal to x cubed, right? So 27 x is power 6 will be x cubed, or in other words, 27 x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, and this can be written as 3 x whole cube minus 1 cube is equal to 0. And I can just factorize this, so 3 x minus 1, this becomes 9 x squared plus 1 plus um, 3 x. Right? Now, this obviously does not have any real solution, so the only real solution will be this, 3 x minus 1 is equal to 0, therefore x equals to 1 by 3, and therefore we can figure out that x equal to y is equal to z is equal to 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 comma 1 by 3 will be the only solution. And we can actually verify this You can plug this back into equation number 2 and find out that this value actually holds true and it so happens that this is the only value for which it works out. So yeah, a beautiful problem. I think this thing can be thought of by anyone. It was really only factorization. The key part I think was factorization. If you could maybe factorize it out. I think after that, the subsequent steps were very natural. So I think this was a very natural problem. It seemed very intimidating, but that's what we see a lot of times, you know, the problem might seem very intimidating, but many times the more intimidating the problem looks, the more weird it looks, 
it probably has a very simple solution and a very elegant solution so i hope you enjoyed that okay moving on we have certain book suggestions on inmo elementary number three by david burton problem solving strategies by arthur and gel functional equations by venkta chala problems in plane geometry by sharigan elementary number three by siapinski graph theory by harari and combinatorics by brualdi okay so at the end we have a similar but challenging problem and we need to find out all real numbers x comma y such that they satisfy this system of equations and a very cool problem might seem very intimidating probably has an easy solution so we try this out and if you're able to solve it let me know until then i'll see in the next video thank you very much and bye bye the programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States, and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.